What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC video. The acoustics in this room are going to be off, because I actually just moved my bed into the empty room. Uh, so, because I just, I, I have a room I'm not using right now. I'm, I'm supposed to have a roommate soon, but he's kind of taking a minute, so I just decided to move into the room until he moves in. Point is, acoustics are off, but guess what? We have the results of the final, the final, I'm pretty sure I might be wrong, I'm very certain actually. Um, series one tournament. And while the first tournament, we actually had a result that was not Don Dozo, uh, we now have the Don Dozo. <laughs> so obviously shout out to Luca Paz who went zero in X in Swiss. Um, I, I, yeah, it's just, it's, you know, he, he did very good. Iceberg VGC, phenomenal player. Anyways, winner of the tournament with a Don Dozo and more importantly, a uh, Assault Vest Dragonite with Terra Flying Terra Blast. So yeah, uh, before we get into this video, if you guys enjoyed at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. Answer my comment question of the day. What do you think about the results of this final Series 1 tournament, and are you excited for Series 2? Let's get into it. So what we're basically going to be doing is reflecting upon the final Series 1 tournament, uh, what we saw out of Series 1, and of course going over the top team. So yeah, let's start off with the top team. So this team has a Choice Specs Golden Go that's pretty standard for the format. Power Gem, however, is new. You tend to see Dazzling Gleam, but Power Gem does help you out uh, with stuff like uh, opposing fire types as well as uh, many of the flying type Pokemon in the format. Uh, but yeah, uh, Murkrow is just running the standard set of Tailwind, Foul Play, and Haze. However, the final move was Quash, which I think is actually a really cool adaptation. We tend to see Icy Wind, um, but... Quash, I think, is actually really solid, especially since under Trick Room, it's allowed to be uh, a speed control mon. We have Focus Sash Palm out with Natural Cure. That's actually uh, an innovation that we saw in San Diego. Natural Cure allows it to switch in on uh, Will-O-Wisps and Spores and then switch out and be perfectly healthy again. Fake Out, Double Shot, Close Combat, Revival Blessing is obviously a very good combination next to Don Dozo. Uh, but what we actually see here that's like really cool beyond the Dragonite is that uh, Tatsugiri Curly Dondozo is actually the one that uh, won the tournament, which was, it, it feels like we're going back to basics of this team because Dondozo with Leftovers Unaware, Wave Crash Substitute Order of Protect was like the original set, um, especially with Terra Dragon, uh, and Tatsugiri Choice Scarf was like the original helper, you know? Uh, Sleep Talk is honestly really cool because that, that allows the Tatsugiri to switch in on um spores and still be able to operate especially since a lot of plays that can happen to a dondozo uh when the tatsuguri is about to pop out is to knock out the dondozo with the first pokemon and then sport so i do really like that move on tatsuguri but the final pokemon that we need to, to take a look at is dragonite with assault vest inner focus flying terra type extreme speed terra blast uh stomping tantrum and low kick not a single dragon move and your stab move is locked behind to Rastalization. That being said, Dragonite is a very cool Pokemon for this uh, for this team. So what I think ended up happening with Dragonite here is it's meant to be like a catch-all for a few things. Low Kick allows it to beat things like King Gambit very reliably. Extreme Speed is obviously just like a really good stab, but that Stomping Tantrum allows it to not only take on Glamora, which is obviously a very good Pokemon in the format, but uh, Terra Poison, uh, Garganical, which has actually become the standard. This one isn't Terra Poison, but I'm sure if we, like, look through enough of these teams, we'll find the Terra Poison Garganical, or actually that doesn't even have a Garganical on it. Um, and also, this tournament had a very big lack of Garganical. You would think you would see more. Let's take a look at this one. This one's Terra Grass as well. Eh, anyways, no Terra Poison in Top Cut, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, or maybe there is one. I'll look at this one so people don't yell at me and say, there was a Terra Poison! There it is. Okay. Yeah, Terra Poison, uh, you know, ground stab, or not ground stab, ground coverage allows you to uh, hit Dondozo. Not Dondozo. <laughs> Garganical. I feel like I've been saying Dondozo for a minute. Garganical pretty consistently with Stomping Tantrum. So that's like really, really nice. But yeah, if we take a look at how the team functions, it feels like a very standard Dondozo team with Golden Go tailwind stuff to open up the team or to open up like the opposing teams at the beginning with just a very strong choice specs uh make it rain but also we have the palm out for fake out support as well as reviving the don or not the don dozo we have the don dozo to bring it back so you can get a second uh attempt at using it but also just bringing back other important members like of course golden go under tailwind is just like a really good pokemon to have so if that goes down you can bring it back pretty effectively and then just bring the entire match back but what i think this team was possibly trying to do 
was the fact that Dragonite having inner focus actually covers a lot of holes for Don Dozo. So you could also do it with a Defiant Pokemon in my opinion, but I think Dragonite uh, was a catch-all for a lot of things. But basically what we discovered is that the best way to beat Don Dozo is the way that our, our ancestors did, the old way, uh, where you just intimidate cycle. So yeah, if you don't remember the San Diego uh, final match, it was basically decided by a ton of intimidate cycling that shut down the Don Dozo does not, and did not allow it to do anything. So Dragonite allows the Intimidate Cycler to basically be dead weight, especially when you pair it next to Golden Go. A lot of the value that you get out of Don Dozo is the pressure it has on Team Preview. You could literally just go one, two, three, four with like Murkrow and the non-Don Dozo people. Uh, and that allows you to force your opponent to bring an Intimidate Mon that's basically dead weight and does nothing. And then it just gets swept, especially since like some of the best Intimidators are the Tauroses as well as um, Arcanine on occasion. So those actually lose to Golden Go pretty consistently, and also Terra Flying Dragonite, which can't be intimidated in one-shots, not one-shots, but comes very close to one-shotting both Tauros with Terra Flying, Terra Blast. Actually, it might just one-shot it for all I know. But yeah, uh, and also, you know, for the thing that Dragonite doesn't really consistently hit, you do have Choice Specs, Power Gems. That's probably what that was meant to do. But yeah, I think that this is just a really well-built team, and I think it's appropriate that for Series 1, we had one non Don Dozo regional uh, champion and one Don Dozo regional champion because it felt like those, I don't, I don't know, it felt like Don Dozo was strong enough that it deserved a championship, but it, it wasn't dominant enough that it deserved all of them, you know, so I, I like that quite a bit. As for other results of the tournament, we do see just like Trick Room, Annihilate stuff. Is it going to be Final Gambit Scarf? Yeah, Scarf, Final Gambit, Trick Room setup, Hard Trick Room team. Very cool. I like that quite a bit. Uh, other teams that we see, Glomora plus <laughs> Glomora plus um, Garganical stuff is obviously quite good, but we do see more Dragonites. And I think that that is a thing that a lot of people figured out is that Dragonite is just a very solid Pokemon in the format, regardless if you're running like the Terra Normal Extreme Speed variant or this super innovative, why can't I find the right tabs to click to, or the super innovative uh, Assault Vest variant. Let's look at this other one. I believe it's probably also just going to be Terra Normal. No, it is Terra Flying, but this one's actually running Sharp Beak uh, in a very similar moveset. Uh, but I believe, what the other one have? The other one had Stomping Tantrum, Terra Blast. Uh, what did the first one have? Sorry. Low Kick, that's a thing. And Low Kick's like, I, I don't know how I forgot that. Low Kick's obviously very good for the... um. For the, uh, the, the King Gambit matchup. But yeah, also King Gambit's just like a really dominant Pokemon in the format. So having a solid answer to that consistently is going to take you very far in these things. But let's just talk about the format as a like as like a wrap up because we're basically never there's no reason to play like series one at this point we have no local events playing series one everyone's practicing for series two and this is the final big of our, uh final big tournament since it's the 22nd of january and the orlando regional championships are in like a week and a half so um overall i would say that series one developed pretty interestingly let's actually let me open up um let me open up the San Diego Regional Championships and we'll sort of like compare and contrast the top cuts. Da, 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 da. It's in here somewhere. San Diego, San Diego. I definitely passed it. Here it is. Yeah, we'll compare and contrast. So you'll notice that like San Diego, something that we saw more than anything was Tatsugiri Stretchy being used on a lot of uh, Don Dozo archetypes because what it would allow it to do was outspeed opposing Meowscaradas and thus just, you know, run through them if they got a single speed boost. Uh, Golden Go was obviously super overrepresented and we saw Garganical win the whole thing with a couple of other Garganicals in top cut here and there. Uh, beyond that, the only other trends would just be like Tailwind, Golden Go, and a couple of rain teams. Obviously, Judy's rain team went very hard. In this top cut, we do still see some rain, but uh, we see a little bit more focus on building the teams like very bulky. Like you can tell that like every team in this top cut is super fat. I see almost no hyper offense and rain while it is hyper offense, uh, generation nine's rain is just like a, a very bulky hyper offense, if that makes sense. Like Palafin and, and Pelipper are not frail Pokemon. I would say the only hyper offense team that I could probably see out of all of these things 
would be arguably uh, Francesco's team here with the Hydragon Mousehold and Annihilate stuff. Beyond that, every team just seems like super bulky, super fat, which is funny because that's usually how we see uh, teams sort of adapt as the format goes on. But with such a short format, it almost felt like we speed ran the adaptations. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's super weird. Uh, we see that there isn't... Let me think. So there's like one hard trick room team, and then you have to travel pretty fast far to find another hard trick room team actually i don't even know if there is another one i wouldn't really call this one hard trick room uh other thing in, in like in the other tournament you would actually see hard trick room here and there uh we do see ferrigarath having a top cut i guess that's like hard trick room plus rain but um i think there were a few ferrigaraths and also i feel like if you just see like king gambit plus like a trick room set or even like in dd plus hatter not hatter in dd plus uh, armorers like that's basically hard trick room so yeah uh Overall, I think the format just got a lot bulkier, and the hyper-offensive Pokemon that we used to see, the, uh, what is it called, like the Hydragons, the uh, Sash Meowskaradas, and some variants of Rain, like especially um, Dreadnought Rain, like that just kind of went out the window. Uh, I don't think we have a single Dreadnought top cut this time around. I think we all sort of like went to the consensus that yes, actually, the best Rain partner is, oh no, there is a, a Dreadnought Rain in top cut. Uh, but I think that we all like, came to the consensus that the best uh, Pelipper partner is probably just going to be Palafin. Uh, what else do we like notice here? Glamora does have a little bit more usage, I think, than last time. I think Glamora was a little bit more niche the first time around. Yeah, there's a single Glamora in top 8, and then the other Glamora is in 28th place. Yeah, I think we understand the value of Glamora, especially when it's next to Garganical. It makes it very easy to wear things down. A single layer of Toxic Spikes makes it so your opponent is going to be much more hesitant to switch, especially since there aren't a lot of good poison types in the format beyond Terra Poison Garganical. Uh, so, you know, your opponent doesn't want to switch. You're breaking Focus Sashes on Pokemon that touch these spikes after a single turn. And if you have Salt Cure on your, you know, if you have like Garganical next to your Toxic Spike setter, whether it be... Uh, a Meowskarada or a Glamora, or maybe both if you're crazy. Let me look at this. No, it's just Glamora. But yeah, uh, if you have that, it makes it much easier to wear things down because they're not only taking like the one eighth of their health from the uh, <laughs> from the poison, but also the uh, the salt cure. So that is obviously super super strong. But yeah, uh, I like this. I like the way that the format shaped up. While I think that series two is a lot more fun, I am gonna kind of miss series one because of the Pokemon you're able to get away with. I think that it might actually be easier to get away with some Pokemon in series two than it was in series one. But I have noticed a significant drop in stuff like. Um, what's his name? Skeledurge and Tauros Water. Like, those guys are gone. There's almost no reason to run Hariyama unless you just want a more supportive version of Iron Hands right now. Um, but I, there are they are kind of uncomparable in that sense. Like, I feel like Iron Hands is usually going to be better just because of that slow pivot Volt Switch, but Hariyama is better in the fact that it has, like, knockoff and wide guard where, you know, Iron Hands doesn't. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about the results really quick, give my thoughts on what this tournament was and how it shaped up. Uh, I'm not too interested in Series 1 anymore. Let's talk about Series 2. My channel is doing Series 2. Yeah. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below as far as the, term, uh, as far as the tournament's results. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.